Thanks so much. Appreciate you. So let's see. Uh, Ashley. Good evening. I'm from the Netherlands. I need some advice. The Bitcoin dominance is 52%, so altcoins are bleeding. Been DCing every day into Bitcoin alts. Should I DC more into Bitcoin because it's dominance? And she also said, this is my first cycle into the crypto verse since February this year. First of all, welcome. You couldn't have picked a better time, which is usually when everybody gets in, when everything's going at an all-time high. And I will just preface it with this. I'm not a financial advisor. I can't give you any financial advice. But when I take a look at this, it's, it really comes down to your, your risk tolerance. And I know a lot of people are going to have a lot of different uh, you know, comments about this one. But for me, when I first got in in 2017, it was Bitcoin first. Then I got into some, some Ethereum, which I heard what wasn't going to be a bad idea. I was buying that around you know, $300, $400. Bitcoin's around $8,000. Then I got into XRP, which is going to be the next big thing. And then there's this new thing in 2017 called Cardano. And I bought all these different crazy alts. And then, of course, when 2018 came around, I was like, oh, man, everything just crashed down. Just like what you're going through if you got in 2021 and you saw a big crash in 2022. And then I became more of a Bitcoin maximalist because I'm like, well, this is going to probably it's the most stable and the most unsecure or unstable market. And I went in heavy into Bitcoin. And then when I took a look at it, I said, well, at some point, I, my risk tolerance is very high. So... Uh, for me, I was like, well, this, and this was at the point of uh, when Bitcoin was 5,000, 6,000. I'm like, well, maybe if it hits to its all time high at 20,000, that's what we, th we thought back then, then that would be it. So I'm, if I'm buying it at 5, 6, it's only a 4X. But Cardano was a dollar. And now it's at a three cents. So maybe I should pick some of that up. And Ethereum used to be 1,000. Now it's 98 bucks. Maybe it goes back to Ethereum, it's a 10X. So for that one, my risk tolerance was higher, so I put into that. I also bought some other crazy stuff that never came back, so you have to understand that. In investing, you're gonna invest in some things and they're not gonna pan out. And it might be a lot, maybe if you're doing pretty good, if you're doing 50%, 60% on positivity, fantastic. You're not gonna bat a thousand. But if you can get into it and say, well, right now, and again, it's all, it all depends on you. Bitcoin will probably do the best in the short term. In the long term, alts will probably outperform Bitcoin. I know some people are saying, but Rob, you don't understand because Bitcoin's going to half a million or a million dollars because that's what blah, blah, blah said, maybe. I remember all those price predictions too. But uh, I will say this, my portfolio, again, 75% Bitcoin, 10% Ethereum, and a bunch of different alts that are out there. So uh, I can't tell you what to do. I can just tell you that's uh, the best thing I can tell you is, you know, Bitcoin's probably going to do pretty well in the near term. Long term, some alts will outperform. Let's see. <laughs> that, video, that video is cringe. The one about Cointelegraph. Yeah, I saw it. It was pretty bad. But hey, that's how it is. Oh my God, Bicky's here. Now the bull run can continue. Tesla. Jake the Day's back. <laughs> Crypto Conversation with Joe. Hello, everybody. JB. Thank you, guys. Um, when demon powered minivan, when can I buy my next Dodge with Doge? That's the real question. Mm, DD's got a good point. I think there can be only one explanation for all the FOMO people waiting for a dip prior ETF real launch. Yeah, probably so. I think people think, uh, you know, they hear a recession's coming. So they think to myself, well, we know Bitcoin's going to go up. So I'll just wait till that recession comes and I pick it up below 20K and then I'll be a genius. And I think that what caught people by surprise is yesterday was they said, wow, that ETF actually went off and I just missed a golden opportunity and they all just piled in. But I will tell you, it's amazing how fast news moves. There's a quote um, that a rumor can travel around the world by the time it takes the truth to put its shoes on. So it was amazing how fast that, that rumor spread, but within like an hour or two hours, it was uh, already debunked. So that's the power of, uh, of social media at some point. It can cause a lot of damage, but it can correct it very quickly. And I feel sorry for, actually I don't. I'm, I was gonna say I feel sorry for the, for the short traders. I don't feel sorry for you. So if you guys lost a bunch of money, sorry, but not really. I mean, it sucks, but come on. <laughs> Twitter check as a clown. Okay. Uh, 
Bumal Tzir? What happened to Black Rock China Foot? What happened to China Foot all just in general? I mean, shoot. I, I remember every, it seemed like every couple of weeks you'd hear China's going to ban something or this and that, and then the price would be uh, depressed. Mm. Oh, hello, everybody. I should probably come down here to the questions. Thank you, Hector. Sweat wallet was launched. Uh, I just saw it sweat app. We start earning sweat. Yeah. Like button. What's the latest rumor? The, the latest rumor, and this is just a rumor, uh, is that um, this was just a rumor that this. Uh, this piece that was put out that the uh, spot ETF was approved was put out by a coin telegraph intern and they made like $2 million in like 15 minutes. But that was, I don't know if that's even proven, but it wouldn't make sense. <sighs> Did we hit the like button? Very good question. <laughs> Carl says this, nobody cares about Bitcoin until it hits 70 K your grandma isn't buying an ETF until then. It's true. Everybody here who's watching this video, I think you're gonna do great because I didn't have, I didn't have the fortitude to, 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 to really stick around and watch a lot of things because I just thought, eh, I mean, if it happens, it happens, but I wasn't putting a ton of funds in after, after in 2018. I picked up as time went on because I just figured I was so, so damn stubborn. But like everybody is who's here right now, look, I personally believe we got screwed out of a really monstrous bull market in the last one in 2021. And some of the proof has been come out with uh, Scam Wankman Freed from FTX. And some things have been said by Caroline, the former CEO, where he said that it was their job to keep Bitcoin under 20K for as long as they possibly could. So if they were trying to suppress the price there, and they were one of the biggest markets out there, what do you think happened behind the scenes? I think they screwed us out of a out of a massive bull run. And I think because of that, everything compresses, and then the next bull run, which we never had a BlackRock or a Fidelity or an Ark Investment really behind us pushing for a spot ETF. We never had a lot of senators and congressmen and women. There are some Democrats, uh, but mostly Republicans, let's be honest, that have been pushing for uh, the advancement of Bitcoin and crypto digital assets. And uh, we sure as uh, heck didn't have uh, some of the momentum we've had. And of course, you know, moving miners around. I just think that the next one will probably be the biggest, but I've been wrong before. And uh, yeah, I'll take the next one. That's the latest rumor. That was all a rumor, so don't quote me on that one. Uh, Jack says, Rob, do you think Scam Bankman will go to prison? You know, I was on the fence about this one because I thought he had so, much, so many connections. I didn't think he was even gonna stand trial, but I was wrong on that one. And uh, yeah, it looks like too many people lost too much money, and he will. And it was because of the, of the testimony from a lot of different employees and former heads of, of departments that are really pushing him under. If you want to watch anybody, uh, watch uh, Tiffany Fong. On, uh, she's on YouTube and also on Twitter. She actually sits there in court and reports it at night. <sighs> two life sentences. I don't know. This is a good question. Pepas. How do we not get upset about lost potential gains by taking profits a little early? I have foam about things that didn't even happen yet. And here's what it comes down to. Ask anybody who was in Luna, Terra Luna. Uh, ask anybody who was in EOS. Ask anybody who was in the last cycle uh, about taking profits a little bit too early. Look, you're never going to time the absolute top and you're never going to actually I can say you're never going to time the bottom, but you probably will. If you dollar cost average every day, pretty good chance you're going to buy the bottom. But as far as like, like the tops, um, you just got to accept the fact that as time goes on, at some point you say, I should take some profits because things are getting overheated. There's a video in the description. I talk about when I'm going to take 80% of my profits for crypto. And there are seven or eight different indicators I look at 
Most of them are free from looking at Bitcoin. One or two, a couple are not. They're on Ben's website, but they're invaluable. If you can take a look, Jesus, I'll just show you. Sometimes I ramble on and I don't really just get to the meat of it. So if you go to lookintobitcoin.com, just take a look at MVRVZ score. And it's market value, current price of Bitcoin, right? Multiply in circulation versus realized value. Realized value takes the price of each Bitcoin when it was last moved, then adds up all the individual price and takes an average of them, then multiplies the average price by the total number of coin circulation. So MVRBZ score, it's very simple. When things are getting overheated in this red zone, you might wanna think about, you might wanna think about selling. Now, I can't tell you when to sell, but if you just take, I mean, it's very simple. This is just one of them. And when you get in this green area, this is not a bad time to buy historically. Look at these other prices. Uh, oh, that's the market cap, oh my God. I don't know what the price in 2011 was, but I'm pretty sure it was very low. And then over here, and again, when does this correspond to? For the halving, 2012, 13, 2014, when we have, you know, monster dips, 2018, remember those days? Right around here. Remember in 2022, same thing. And I think it nailed, yeah. November 22nd, where the hell did it go? November 22nd, 2022 was Bitcoin's all-time low. I mean, for this cycle. And of course, it's in, that, it's in that range. Same thing up here. So for me, like, if, if even if you want to make it even quicker, just think, think to yourself, okay, when it hits the sixth level, maybe I sell 5% or something. Something because I don't feel bad when it collapses. And go from there. There's many different ways to do it. As we get closer to the bull market, I'll stop talking about, you know, the buying and we'll start talking more about selling. But uh, for right now, I don't think that's, <laughs> that's, that's really what we need to concern ourselves with. Hope that answers your question. Rob's giving away a Tesla. I, I think that's fake news. I've learned a lot about charts with Cohen. Ben Cohen, that guy? Ben just put out his uh, 3,000 uh, Bitcoin dominance video. And uh, it's actually pretty good. I actually, because when he puts those out, they're like, they're long, like 40 minutes. Sometimes like an hour or something. I just listen when I'm walking. It makes sense. Yeah. Influencers don't hit the buy button, except me. And they're underwater right now. That's okay. I was underwater in 2018 and 2019. I'm okay. Yeah, grandma isn't buying a Ferrari with Bitcoin. Who's using, who's using Bitcoin to buy a Ferrari? Who's buying a Ferrari? Can we try to get into Ferraris? I have bad knees. I can't, I can't do that. Ah. Hmm. Lay Mc, McMillan says, thoughts on Binance in the UK not accepting new users. It seems like Binance always has a, a little bit of controversy kind of surrounding it here and there. But I will say it's amazing how long they've uh, gone through and not collapsed. Because when you hear about all these, all these FUD stories and these negative stories, you have to really, I know people will say that's FUD, that's FUD. But is it? How much, was, how much FUD was surrounded Celsius before it went under? How much FUD about BlockFi? How much FUD about FTX? Some of these FUD stories are real and you have to pay attention to them. I know that's not a very popular opinion, but damn it, it's right. You have to do those things. So when I see FUD stories about Tether, or I see FUD stories about Binance, I get interested. Sometimes I think to myself, where there's smoke, there's fire. When I take a look at this though, we are in a brutal, brutal bear market. Uh, some people will say it's not that brutal. Some people will say we're in a bull market, okay? But it uh, depends on what metrics you're looking at, I suppose. But in all honesty, when I take a look at it, as far as with Binance, they're making it. They haven't collapsed. All the ones I think that have collapsed, that are going to collapse, have collapsed. And uh, I mean, look at how many that have gone down. I mean, look, even like banks in America, Silvergate Bank, all the rest of them have gone down. So, I mean, the next big downturn, I would guess, is a recession, which I do think is coming. 
I just think that uh, if it hasn't happened now, it's going to be pretty damn amazing how much they'd have to, how bad it would have to be for them to get shut down. So we'll see. But anyhow, my thoughts on not, not accepting new customers. Well, they got problems with uh, regulators in the UK, as far as I understand. I don't blame them. It's the same thing with Canada. But th there's a reason why all those, all the uh, Canadian exchanges, not all, but most left, because they have so many problems with regulators over there, they just don't want to deal with it. They're like, fine, we're out of here. We're going to go someplace where, we, where we're accepted. Mm, which I don't blame them. And I like it. I have nothing wrong with Canadians. It's not the Canadians. I have a problem with uh, the regulators. I have a problem with all the regulators. Dorius, Doris, sorry. Gareth Salway says, IRS new rules are meant to destroy crypto. I was going to talk about it today, as a matter of fact. So there is a law that is looking to be, it looks like it's already, it's already gone, gone into effect. And on the Republican side, they'll say this is 87,000 new IRS employees are going to be brought in with an $80 billion increase in budget for the IRS. And that's not true. Really what it is is, first of all, the $80 billion that's been allocated to the IRS, $45 billion will be used for more regulators and more people that are uh, dealing with the audits and things like that. So it's not totally $80 billion, <laughs> only $45 billion. And the second thing you have to understand, too, is that uh, people are retiring at a very uh, rapid pace, I guess, in the IRS or leaving the IRS. So trying to replenish the ranks. So on top of that, yes, there is that, that issue coming forward. And I understand. Um, but like we just talked about, there is a, a component of where the IRS is getting geared up because they are trying to crack down on everybody. And it's not just like the crypto individuals. It's also massive companies, LLC, S-Corps and C-Corps, who are trying to, they say, dodge the system. Look, I've been in the system for quite some time. There is a legal way to reduce your taxes as far as tax minimization, and there are ways that are illegal. And I think most of these companies probably did it the legal way. They just haven't got it audited. If you've been through an audit, it sucks. I've been through one. And uh, they'll probably go through that, and they'll tie up most of the time with all these new, new guys that have come in, and it'll just be a wash. I think there will be some people, and there'll be some big wins, and the senators and the congressmen and women will like tout these big wins as like the reason why that 80 billion went to, went to good use, but it's all a dog and pony show, quite honestly. And uh, we'll see how much they can actually get back. It's not the fact that they need all the money back from the people. It's the crazy irresponsible spending of the government that has got them in this position. It's not me and you. It's not these large, huge corporations. I'm sorry. I'm sick of hearing about that. It's them. That's just a theory. Walking with paws, Dave Desai, Beardy's Day is here. <laughs> Tom Crown is a pro. Uh, these guys are good too. Let's see. Just keep your taxes straight. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's right. Tom Crown does this. Uh, this he tweets out every day. This is this is uh, the start of the bull run. I'm just tweeting this out on my 200 something day, and it's just for fun. But he's got a good channel. Does good TA. Uh, Trudeau is the problem, perhaps. Some people love him. Most people do not. I don't know. Yeah, crypto's got a good point. Crypto with Joe. Uh, I say we're in a we're in a market. I DC in regards to the market. I got in later than a lot of people, so I need to make up ground. Just be careful. Remember the rules, everybody. Don't invest more than you can afford to lose. Don't use leverage. Uh, everything's a scam, temper otherwise. Don't uh, use leverage. And I always say like two to three X isn't gonna crush you if you do it right and uh, take profits. But 50 to 100 X is kind of crazy. So those are the rules. And then the last one is don't trust verify. Gotta stick that in there. Mm. I didn't know that. Dave Sosa says, same with the governments in the EU and Holland. They're pissing away all our taxes on, yeah. Hmm. Oh, Big Bean says, Dan, can you elaborate on the audit a little bit? What happened and why did they audit you specifically? And how bad was it deal with? It was, 
it wasn't, it was like a week long audit. It was for my business. Uh, as people may know, uh, before this, I was a medic in the army and then I got into healthcare and I did this online education program where, uh, I showed, uh, medics and nurses and LBNs how to pass a clinical exam through an online education platform. Really, really successful. They had a bunch of questions about it, uh, because of the way that I, I, did a lot of uh, deductions, which I told them very simply. I'm like, look, I have an office in my house. That is my office. I have these other things that I have to pay for. These are deductions. And they went through all, and like, it wasn't like I was making millions of dollars for Pete's sakes. I was like, are you really going to go after me? I think there's bigger fish to fry. I think it's just because this is what I really think. I think they go after people like me at that point, Joe 100,000 air, because they're like, well, this is an easy, this is an easy win. But if I bra if I drag in somebody from like some monstrous corporation, I got to use all these resources. They're going to have lawyers. Then we got to get our lawyers. It's going to take forever. Let's just go up to this guy and screw him over. And of course, when I went in there, I think I ended up paying like an extra two thousand dollars after a week. I'm like, all right, whatever. And that was it. So, yeah, Clint. Great show. We Canadians have great issues with our very own undermining group government. Trust Nani is not part of any governments. Well, that's been since day one, let's be honest. The Fair Tax Act seems like a decent fix. I'll go with that. I don't know. I haven't read it. That's okay. The people that vote on it haven't read it either. That's what their interns are for. And I think, uh, oh, yeah. I don't know. News about Jarky. Jarky, if you guys don't know, he's, uh, he was a lot of the times in the streams, he would give away memberships. Really great person. I don't know what happened to him. Maybe he's uh, just chilling out and uh, trying to not deal with the nonsense. I do miss that guy. Uh, Big Diamonds, do you use any mobile wallets? Like Coinbase Wallet or Exodus? I almost used a Coinbase Wallet because I wanted to buy a specific degenerate gambling play, but I didn't. Um, I just use, I have MetaMask on my, on my iPhone. And usually what I use, I use that for is like when I'm trying to understand something and if I want to sh show you guys something, I'll use my MetaMask wallet. Remember, a, a wallet that you have on your phone is a hot wallet and it's easily, I mean, it's much more easy to hack into that as it's always connected to the internet. So be careful with that. I don't keep a ton of crypto on there, just things that like, kind of like how you'd wouldn't put your life savings in your wallet that you walk around with. You'd probably put your life savings in a bank or buried in the backyard or whatever you do. I don't know. But uh, if you're talking about like for the other parts, so I do use a hot wallet like that, but only MetaMask. What else do I use? I think that's it. I think I used Exodus at one point. Oh, I use the Daedalus wallet. That's a hot wallet. And uh, my Ledger and my Tangem cold storage device. That's where I keep the most of it. And Alipal, but not that much. Ah. Yeah, yeah, Nick, low-hanging fruit, exactly. That was me. Any thoughts of an internet computer protocol? Uh, no, still have to look into it. I know some people will say it's a dead chain, but I don't believe that until I look at it myself. Keystone, yeah, Meme talked about that too. Um, Keystone is a pretty cool wallet, check them out. Nah, I'm good. Like at some point, like I just get oversaturated. Like I've got an Alipal, I got a Ledger, and I got a Tangem. I'm not gonna go for a fourth one, unless something happens. Uh, Rob, you see that all the Tangem 2.0 walls arrive with their security tabs open. Mine did too, I'm not worried. It was probably custom, but still sucks. I don't think it was all of them, but I heard you're like the third person now that has told me that. So the security tab, when you get it, Actually, this is it, Mike. No, mine was, mine was sealed because it was right here. This is the, the new Tangem 2.0. I'm waiting to do the video because I'm waiting for them to update the actual app. But when you open it up, uh, these tabs were, some people said that their tabs were, were open. And of course, I guess they say the customs, but I will say, like me, I'd be pretty paranoid. I would have talked to Tangem. I personally would have probably returned it just for sh because. But with the new, with the new uh, Tangem cards itself, like 
they don't come with the private keys installed. You have to do that through the app. Again, there's a link in the description for the, for the deep dive on that one. But uh, yeah, I wouldn't. I get really nervous about stuff like that because I'm like, if I'm going to trust this to put my life savings into or a, a good portion of what I'm uh, investing, I want it all. That's just me. Ah, oh, Meme says, I've been having trouble with my Keystone. I have the battery operated one and batteries leak. That's weird. Maybe it's just a battery issue. Ah, uh, uh, Peppa says it was a lot, hundreds. Tangent said, don't worry about it to all of us. Hmm. You can't trust that. How do you trust that? You can't trust that. I like Tangent. But you can't trust, you can't say, oh, I'll just, I'll just trust you. I don't trust you. I don't trust anybody. I would call customer support and I'd be like, hey, man, give me a new one. I'll, I'll ship this one back. I know about how, the, how it works with the private keys, but I mean, come on. You know, if, you, if, like, if I'm going to tell you guys about it and they promise you a product and they can't just put some tabs on, I just don't see how all those tabs were, were opened by customs. That's a lot of customs. Are they really doing that much? Mm, I don't know. I'd rather be, <clears throat> I'd rather err on the side of caution. That's just me. Gone are the days when we just trust people, right? You know, like when I had Alex Mashinsky on my show, and Steve Ehrlich from Voyager and they lied right to my face. Remember those guys? Yeah. So, yeah, Ashley says it right. Why take the risk for 50 bucks? Come on. Yeah, I still like Ledger the best so far, but I also like Denim. Hey, neither of them have been hacked, so you can't, you can't uh, argue with those results. Todd says, listen to you talk about Sweatcoin, your thoughts on coin app to XYO and Steppen coin and not choosing them over sweat. So I did use Steppen. I don't know the other one. So I did use Steppen coin. I just didn't like the fact that I had to buy this. And this was at the, at the height. You had to buy an expensive NFT to use the app to get the, the, the rewards. And I'm like, well, what's going to happen when the NFT depreciates in value? Because at some point, I, don't, I, I never really believed at that point, that NFTs are going to be like this great big thing. Now we know it's probably going to do pretty well, but I don't know how much those those step NFTs were pricey. And then when I use it, it didn't really didn't really work too well. And I was like, why am I going to use this? And then of course that was just me. I just didn't understand. Like it kind of felt like it kind of felt like a Ponzi, quite honestly, because I'm like, okay, I get a step in NFT, and that's higher. And then I build it up and I sell it to somebody else. Okay, but with Sweat, I'm like, well. The app is free. And of course, when people say, but it's not free, Rob, because you're the product. Well, no kidding. On YouTube, I'm pretty sure you see ads. And on Twitter, I'm pretty sure you see ads. And on the Sweatcoin app, you're going to see ads. All right, I'm okay with that. And I get to buy stuff. And then I would accumulate the tokens and I buy little things like headphones and like booklets and stuff like that. I never. But it was just like a motivating thing. I was like, well, I like this because it's been around since 2014. 120 million dollar 120 million downloads and um, I like the team so that's why I went with them and I just felt like it was free so why wouldn't people want to use it but people get pissed off when I when I start talking about sweatcoin on some they're like how dare you talk about it I'm like I'm just going to stop talking about it jesus yeah <laughs> jeff giving all your data for pennies do you have a cell phone are you watching this on YouTube? Do you go to Twitter? Do you have any digital footprint? Come on, man. Come on. Ah. Always buy a hard, hard wallet directly from the manufacturer. That's true. And this is true from a G. That's a pretty good handle. Any wallet that doesn't give a different re receive address, each transaction is bad for privacy. That's very, very true. And I got to tell you, sometimes I don't even follow that advice. I really should. 
Do you agree with crypto savvy? I don't know who crypto. I don't know what he said. Uh, <clears throat> David says, using the first tangent, what's your opinion on the first version? I think that first version is what's going to probably bring more people into, not bring it in, but, but more so the normies, the people that come in will want to use. Because this, this version one of tangent, you don't get a mnemonic phrase. And for some people, well, actually for a lot of people that are like crypto OGs, they despise that. Like I have to have the mnemonic phrase because not your keys, not your crypto, right? Well, the private key is actually in this card. So you have that private key. And you can take a look at that deep dive video and explain why Tangent doesn't have that private key. You have it, you own it. It's right here on this card. So I think that if people are used to debit cards or credit cards and they're used to apps in their phone, they'll probably want to use this. Have you tried to explain how to use a ledger to a normal person? And like, it's not that hard. Let's just be honest. And people can get it. It's just a little bit more in depth. That's all. So like, I think this is like the easier version. And that's the more difficult. But if they do the same thing, then whatever. Now, the second version, you can have your mnemonic phrase. And you will write it down. And you can store it. And you can have a backup from another cold storage device. So on those ones, uh, that's the difference. And I personally have the first one. I'll probably be moving over to the second one once they update the, uh, update the app and I can show you. It's, it has nothing to do with, with me not being able to do it. It's just because of the channel. Sandbox, that's on Vive Collectibles. They got great stuff. They got everything from like Disney and Marvel and all the, all the, all the cool IP, ad, all, all the cool intellectual property. I think it'll do pretty well, just depending on what the use case and utility is for it. Again, this is for NFTs. <laughs> I'll sell you a harder wallet, put all your crypto in it. And that was a problem with ledgers. I don't know if you guys remember, but people would buy it on Amazon and it would be from like a third party seller and they would already have the private keys. They would send the ledger to the person. The person would just start loading up their crypto and then the, the person that would sell it to them, they had the mnemonic phrase. And that's, that's the problem with the mnemonic phrase. They could just reset everything or they could actually take the mnemonic phrase, had another nano ledger, input that, and then they'd have all your crypto. So, yeah. Yeah, that'd be cool. Travel should make a fireproof card. That would be pretty cool. Mm, I think that's, I think we're good. And uh, let's see. David Lee, uh, exactly. I think it's still as good with it in the card. Yeah, it's good enough. All right, everybody. So coming up on uh, roughly the hour, but that's it for today. So I think uh, I was going to do a second stream today, but uh, some things came up. So that's it for today. So look, like today's video, thumbs up, subscribe, all the good stuff. Thanks for hanging out with me. I appreciate it. And uh, I'll see you in the next one. Hang in there. Stay alive till 25. See ya.